That's my big bear. Come on. No, no. Continue on, sir. That's a boy. Come here. Ah, that's my bear. Okay, boy, you got muddy. All right, let's go inside. Hey, everybody. Nikki D from Five Dog Farm. Today I want to talk to you about garden tools. Since this was my first successful garden, I've had others way less successful, but I really put my mind to it this year and had had some fun and, and had some successes. Um, I wanted to start figuring out how to take better care of my garden tools. My garden tools have sort of gotten, over time, neglected and rusty. And as you can see, this is how I was storing them in this little dirty pail in our little uh, tool shed that we have out there. Just, uh, you know, making sure that they were in at night as best I could, but not really taking care of them. And who doesn't love a brand new, fresh, out-of-the-bag tool? I know I do. I love how this looks. So now that I know gardening is really going to be part of Five Dog Farm and that I enjoy it on top of it, I figured I'd better start cleaning up my tools. This fall, I'll still be doing a little bit more gardening. I'm trying to stretch my comfort zone and uh, see what fall brings us from the garden. And then next winter, I'm hoping that we can actually get into some cold framing and try doing farming year round. As you can see, we're in the farmhouse. <laughs> uh, I made the mistake at the beginning of the year saying 2020 was the year to simplify and then 2020 completely fell apart. <laughs> what a mess. It's been horrifying for everybody across the world. So I'm afraid to say that 2021 is the year of the farmhouse, but that's what I'm going to say anyway. I'm going to fly in the face of danger. Mr. Blue Jeans and I have been, managed to get everybody else set up. We're getting the last of the animal shelters set up, and then it's time for us to have walls, <laughs> which we don't have right now. But that's okay, we're up here, we're loving it, and, and that's fine, and, and we have Gigi's kitchen to cook in and, and go have a good time if we want to be warm. <laughs> and, that's, and we have blankets. Uh, but it is an exciting time because we're kind of getting started in the farmhouse. So this is my little nook right now while we get the rest of this done. And in time, you'll get to see everything that we're doing inside the farmhouse, literally from the ground up. If you haven't seen it, there's a time lapse that we did when the farmhouse was being built, and it's kind of cool to watch it go from just, um, a flat dirt area to, to the monitor barn that it is now. Anyway, back to the tools. So, um, what I was doing during the, the season, especially with my tomato plants, is whenever I used my, my nippers or my scissors on tomato plants, I brought along rubbing alcohol and water. Um, about half and half, maybe a little less rubbing alcohol, a little bit more water, but every time I would cut a tomato plant, before I went to the next plant, and, and you uh, gardeners who have done this for years, you know this, I didn't know. You could cut a tomato plant that has a disease, go to the next plant without cleaning, cut that plant, and guess what you've done? Yeah, you gave it chicken pox. You gave it that disease from the other plant, whatever it was, you have now given it to that one. So. I would just grab this, my paper towels that I would have carrying with me in the little bucket or however, spray my nippers or my scissors or whatever I was using, wipe them off, go to the next plant. So that was an easy solve for me and now it's something that I just readily do. So I wanted to bring in the next step of cleaning the tools at the end of the season. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab some steel wool or a nice hard bristled scrubby brush. I'm gonna to go to the utility sink and I'm gonna give these a good scrubbing because ugh, they, they need it. You know, we've got, this one didn't get really dirty. This is a newer tool. Um, the trowel, the trowel has, you know, it's got garden grunge on it. It needs a cleanup, uh, rust and things like that, which is where I'll be using the steel wool. But then I wanted something afterwards to pr protect them. Not only during the winter season where probably won't be using them and if I do we certainly know it won't be on a daily basis like in the spring and the summer and something that will uh, help me keep them nice because I'm not going to all this work for nothing <laughs> so what I'm going to do is go to the utility sink get these cleaned up I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you the easiest most convenient way at least as far as I'm concerned to keep your tools clean and sharp during the growing season and during the non-growing season so I'm going to be right back. Hang in there. 
all the tools are clean, scrubbed up, and they really weren't that bad. I mean, these are really old. I believe these uh, were my grandma's, uh, and she kept them in, in, in really nice shape. So just a little scrub and uh, very soft and smooth. You could uh, go as far as doing some sharpening on your tools if, if you felt that they needed it. These at the moment don't, so I didn't need to do that. But take care of all of that before you go ahead and store them for the winter time. As I said, for me, I'm going to be gardening through fall, so this winter I may do a little bit of sharpening on things that, that need it. So what are we doing now? We're taking a 50-pound bag of play sand, that stuff that when you were a kid you used to play with in the sandbox. Um, and maybe you still do. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you want to take that. You want to take some sort of a bucket. I happen to have a, um, I have a pail here that Mr. Blue Jeans had gotten me, and I love galvanized buckets. I just have this thing about galvanized buckets, and I have quite a few. This one happened to be on the tractor. So when I took the maiden voyage with Big Red and decided that I had enough confidence about after a week of driving him around, I was going to go grab a load of crusher to take down to the garden. I didn't know, probably my favorite size bucket was in the, uh, the bucket on the front. So <laughs> when I went to go grab the, the crusher rock and I, I dumped the dump bucket in the front and start to grab, I sort of saw something drop. So I stopped everything and climbed out. And uh, yeah, I managed to really dent up my uh, my garden bucket. So Mr. Blue Jeans to the rescue. He bought me a, he bought me a couple more uh, different sizes, but I couldn't get rid of this one just because every time I look at it, I laugh. And now remember to check the dump bucket on the tractor. So I thought this would be the perfect one for holding all the hand tools. So what am I doing? I'm putting in the play sand, which you can see I've already started to do, and then I add good old mineral oil. Now, when I went to the store, I couldn't find plain mineral oil, so I got baby oil. The only difference is this has a scent, which is fine because it smells really good. Reminds me of my kids when they were little. Um, so this is 20 ounces. Depending on the size of your pot, what you don't want is some sort of glossy, goopy mess. You still want this to feel like sand. In the case of mine, it's going to take almost all 50 pounds. So I'm going to put all of the mineral oil in. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and take one of the trowels here and just stir it up a bit. You want to keep in mind when you use a bucket, make sure it doesn't have holes in the bottom. <laughs> you don't want the mineral oil seeping out all over the place because not only will it ruin things, it's not going to do anything for your tools once it all comes out the bottom. So go ahead and mix all of your mineral oil into the sand and when you feel you've got a really good mix going on, what you want to do, in, in my case I want a little bit more sand in here, so I'm going to dump some more sand in. I just use whatever I found, which happened to be a dog bowl because we have so many dogs. <laughs> and get some more sand in here and continue getting it going and mixed in. You get the idea. This is super easy. So why sand and oil? Well, believe it or not, when you put your tool, when you're finished with your tool and you pop it into the sand, it sharpens it a little bit scrapes off any yuckies that were on it. Now obviously if your tool is caked in dirt, it's probably a good idea to give it a wipe off. You could do the, um, oh, I don't have it here, you could do the rubbing alcohol mixture that I had mentioned in, in uh, a towel or a rag if you have one on you and wipe it off before you put it in. So I wouldn't put in caked, caked in items. Um, but just you pop it in, it, as it goes in it gives a little bit of a, a sharpening, it gives a little bit of a cleaning. The oil lubricates and protects your uh, tools from any kind of a rust that they may get over time. Obviously just sitting out in the garden, uh, that can happen much easier than if they're sitting in something that has the ability to protect them. When we were living in Wisconsin, I did this little trick uh, and let me tell you, the, the winters there were very harsh, but my tools were in great shape. I left them in the garage, we did not leave anything outside left them in the garage sitting in the sand with the, with the mineral oil and come springtime they were in fine shape it was lovely to be able to get out there and get going without having to think now i need to take care of my tools it's already been done so that's about it i'll probably put a little bit more sand in here to top it off 
when you're done, what could be easier than that? I don't know. So let me know if you guys end up using this tip and you like it, or if you do take care of your tools in a different way, go ahead and leave a comment. I love to hear from you. I'm learning and I love to know what you're doing as well. Sharing is caring, as they say. So this is Nikki D again from Five Dog Farm. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll talk to you next time.